Hey guys, this is Elias from Softly, and in this video we're gonna import WooCommerce variable products using WP All Import. Now let's upload the file we're gonna use, all right, and select WooCommerce products from the dropdown. Now you can see that I don't have any products here on the site, so I'll select new items and continue to step two. Now here we just need to check that our import file is looking good, which in this case it is. You can see that uh, WPL import is detecting 2038 rows and this is good this is the number of rows we have but we won't end up with that many products we'll end up with 191 uh, because most of these rows are actual variants from the same product so you'll see what i mean let's just continue to step three all right, so here is the import template and what we need to do is to drag and drop the elements from the right panel into the appropriate import fields. Let's start with the title, uh, the description and short description. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit and open up the WooCommerce add-on tab. Now, remember we're importing WooCommerce variable products. So uh, the first thing we're gonna do on this tab is to select variable products from the product type dropdown. You can see that the variations tab has just enabled so let's start dragging and dropping the elements starting with the sq uh, we have the regular price around here we don't have sell price so let's skip that all right and we'll skip this settings too uh, this are some advanced functionalities for prices so if you want to learn more about what they do just hover on the question mark and it will show you a brief description of it now uh, these settings will run with the default values and for the inventory tab we'll just need to enable the manage stock option because we do have stock on our file all right for the low stock threshold let's set it up in i don't know three all right and for the stock status we'll let wpl import decide automatically whether a product is in or out of stock these options will run with the default values too and skip shipping and link products because we don't have that information here on our file. Now let's jump into the attributes tab. All right. And this is very important guys, because without attributes, we don't have variable products. So let's set that up, uh, starting with our size and color elements, size and color. All right. Drag and drop the values. Cool. And here we can just control some advanced functionalities for the attributes. For example, if I didn't want the size to generate variations, we can just disable this option. Cool. Now, uh, if I don't want this attribute to be visible in the front end, I can also disable this option. And if I don't want to create this attribute as a taxonomy, I can just disable this option too. Uh, now, this is not what I want to do. I want this attribute to be a taxonomy. I want it to be visible in the front end and I do want to create variations from size. So let's enable all of that. Uh, if you want to have a little bit more flexibility over these options, you can just enable the advanced tab and the options will be there. Now for this example, let's just run with this and jump to our next functionality, which is the ability to link all the variations. Now, what this option will do is to create variations from every possible combination of attributes. Now, if I enable this option, you will see that the variations tab will disappear. And the reason for that is because we don't need to manually set up the variations if we're gonna just combine all of the attributes and generate the variations from that. Uh, this is not what we want though, because uh, we have here uh, all of the variations we want to create are here on our file. So let's just disable that and jump to the variations tab. Now, here is where the magic actually happens for variations. Uh, in this tab, we'll find several options. We need to read the titles and choose the file structure that resembles the most to the example below. Now, in this case, it says all variations for a particular product have the same title as the parent product. You can see in the example image that the product titles for these variations are the same. Uh, so if your file looks like this, you should select this option and drag and drop the title here. All right. Uh, this is very simple, but it can be confusing. 
So if you, I don't know, get a little bit lost here, just don't hesitate to write to our support team and we'll be happy to help you. Now, the file structure that resembles the most to the example we're using is this first one, because we have the SQ, all right, and the parent SQ. Cool, so uh, if I run the import like this, it will create variations and it will link them based on the parent SQ but in your case, it can be different. So as I said before, just read the titles and compare your file with the example images to find the right structure for you. Then just drag and drop the elements to the appropriate import fields and you're good to go. Now we have here another option, which is importing uh, an XML file where the variations are child XML elements. So this is a little bit trickier and we have a video example here that will explain this in a bit more details. So if you're using that kind of XML structure, just uh, see the video and you will know how to do it. Now let's just continue with our import using the first option, which is the one that will work for our file structure. These settings are good the way they are and this one's too. Uh, we have here a very important option, which is the ability to create products with no variations as simple products. And you know what this uh, what this will do is to basically, well, what it says if uh, WPL import finds a product that has no variations, well, it will just create it as uh, a simple product. That's that's it. Uh, but this is very useful because uh, you can create simple products with the variable import, but you cannot create variable products with the simple product import. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I will leave it uh, enabled and continue with our images. All right, so here we have uh, the image field. Just need to drag and drop the images like this. And let's hit preview to see if WPL import is able to download these images. Let's run the test and it's successful, which means that our images will be downloaded and attached to our products. Uh, let's continue. Uh, we can leave these settings as they are for the most cases. Uh, I will just explain real quick what they do. This will basically compare the image that's being downloaded with the images in our media library. If it finds a matching image, it won't download it, uh, but instead it will use the one that exists already in our site. So this is very cool, especially for these kinds of imports where I have a t-shirt, which is, I don't know, a uh, color black, and I have it in several sizes. So if I disable this option, it will download the same image for uh, size S, M, L, XL, whatever, and I'll end up with a bunch of duplicate images. So if you don't want that, keep that enabled. Uh, you can just choose to keep the images in the current library. And well, basically, if you disable this option and WPL import wants to update a existing product, it will delete all of the images in that product and attach the new ones. So this is uh, super useful when you have a like a feed of products and your supplier just updated all of the pictures. Well, you can just uh, disable this option and WPL import will delete all of the old photos from your products and upload the new ones. Uh, for the most cases, you just want to uh, keep this enabled because both of these options will save you a lot of time when importing products or whatever data you are importing. Uh, these ones, uh, we can just leave them as they are and continue with the taxonomies. Now for the taxonomies, we only have categories so let's enable that and here we just need to select the uh, the option that resembles the most to the uh, category structure we have here. Now, as you can see, I have a hierarchical structure where uh, I have parent and child categories and I have this symbol to separate different groups of hierarchy. Now we can import this kinds of structure with WPL import by selecting this third option and enabling this checkbox that says an element in my file contains the entire hierarchy. Now I'll just drag and drop this, All right? And if I hit preview, you will notice that it's mostly fine because uh, the structure seems to be okay, but we have the different groups 
uh, that are not being separated. So to fix that, we just need to enable this option right here uh, that says separate hierarchy groups via symbol. WPL import by default uh, chooses the pipe, but you can change that to whatever you want. Uh, so let's preview again. And you can see that our category structure is looking good now. So I leave a link in the description below so you can learn a little bit more about importing taxonomies, especially uh, when you have hierarchy in that taxonomies. It's very common for these kinds of imports. So yeah, just click on the link in the description below to learn more about it. For now, let's uh, continue with our import because we only have uh, these other product options here. You're welcome to take a look here, but we'll just keep this all together because uh, these settings are good by default for this example. So let's just keep that. And here we have the function editor, which I believe it's the most powerful feature in WPL import because if you know PHP and want to run a function to do pretty much whatever you like here with your data, you can do so. Uh, I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below too, so you can learn more about how to run PHP functions in WPL import. Uh, for now, let's continue to step four. And here we just need to click on the auto attack button and I don't know, most of the time, WPL import will detect the right unique identifier for us. In this case, it shows the name, the SQ, uh, the size attribute, and the color attribute. And this is okay, this is very good, because uh, what we need with the unique identifier is to have a value that will be absolutely unique for all of the records in our file. And this is good, this is actually the one we need. Now, if you wanna learn how to choose the unique identifier manually, I'll leave a link in the description below for that too. Now these settings are good for this example, so we'll just uh, leave it like that. I'll also leave a link uh, in the description for the scheduling options. This is a very commonly used uh, feature for WooCommerce imports, so you will definitely want to take a look at this. Now let's continue with the import and run it. All right, and this will take a minute or two, so I'll just pause the video here and come back when it's ready. Uh, all right, that didn't take too long. Let's see if our products came in okay. Great, so we have 191 products, which is the number we expected. Uh, the products seem to be okay. Let's take a look in the front end. All right, yeah, this looks beautiful. All the images seems to be here. Let's open this product up and see what's going on here. Great, so we have our title, the categories are here, uh, the short description, price. Let's take a look at the variants. This is good, it's changing the image, so the variants have their own image. Okay, uh, yeah, we have the attributes, the description, Oh, this is this looks very nice, guys. So let's let's take a look here in the edit product page. All right, uh, this looks good. The variations are here. Uh, they have their own stock. Uh, okay. Yeah, guys, this is this is good. This is what we wanted. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, this is how you import WooCommerce variable products using WPL import to a WordPress site. Now, I really hope you like this video, and if you want to learn more about how to import and export other WooCommerce data, like orders, products, reviews, and whatnot, just check out the other videos in our channel, or go to our website at wpolimport.com. See you next time.